Welcome to the Sharon Cliff Podcast. This show is for women in midlife who want to optimize their energy, instill a positive mindset, and live a life of their dreams. If your priority right now is to rediscover you, find more energy, reconnect with yourself, do more of what you love, and have more fun, I am here to guide you through your journey to make it your reality. I'm 48, wife, mum to four amazing humans, a mentor for women in midlife, business coach for female entrepreneurs, and I'm so proud to say that I've been a host of this podcast for two and a half years. This podcast celebrates women in midlife. Join me and my guests as we redefine what it means to be in midlife by exploring topics that are important to women at midlife. We aren't over the hill, we're just getting started. It's your time to shine. On Sharon Cliff Podcast, we welcome Morgan T. Nelson. And Morgan, I would love you to introduce yourself to the listeners. Tell us who you are and what it is that you do. Yeah. Well, firstly, thanks so much for having me on, Sharon. I'm super excited. I always love jumping on and having chats with people and pouring some value out to people while we're here. So um, I'll give you I'll give you the medium story. You know, it's kind of good for people to, you know, understand a little bit of the backstory before we sort of go into lots of things because who I am, what I do now. I'm 30 years old now. We've got a uh, personal development company, an education company where, you know, we're priding ourselves on being one of the fastest growing and one of the most impactful ones here in Australia. So we've got multiple seminars and training programs, stuff that really help people sort of break through old patterns and create their life by design, you know. And that's my big thing that we're doing now. I've also got a couple other companies. So we're, we're growing three different companies right now, which is super exciting. And... I definitely have created a pretty amazing life for myself. I've been able to travel all over the world, traveling only 50 countries. We've made millions of dollars. We've impacted lots of people around the world. I've been able to speak on stages up to 6,000 people at a time. But what's important to know is like literally a decade ago, it was so far from that, like so far from it. It's not even funny. You know, like pretty much I finished school I went to year 12 for no other reason but the parties and the girls. That was the only reason. I I just knew it. Like I saw other people leaving because they were like, I don't like school. I'm going to leave. I'm going to get a job. And I'm like, you guys are idiots. I'm going (laughs) to stay in school even though I don't like it. I'm going to stay here because every weekend there's a party. And every weekend, all the girls from school come to the parties. It's amazing. Why Why would I leave school? I loved it. It was just so much fun. And But what happened was when we finished, everyone else was going to university and doing their life stuff. And I was really left with a big question mark thinking, what's next for me? I got no idea what I'm doing. And I fell into a carpentry career because that's where I was sort of believed the only thing I could do was get a job trading time for money, you know, working with my hands. I was literally told by my teachers, we recommend you go get a job um, working with your hands, like a mechanic or a tradie or something, because you're not going to make it in anything like reading, writing, journalism, or speaking. It's not your strong suit. And I was like, okay, but you know, funny enough, it's all I do now, right? <laughs> um, and but for many years, I sort of went down that path, and you know, we went down whole whole world of like toxicity, negativity, depressed. Nineteen years old, here I was working, we we're working about thirteen to fourteen hours a day, seven days a week, three weeks at a time, up in Mackay, so forty five degree heat, out in the heat every day, and it didn't take us too long before I started this click on to what my whole environment were doing. And they were all drinking every single day. They were using drugs every single day to wake up. Drugs keep going. Drugs go to sleep at night. And their whole world and my whole world was just toxic. That's what the whole thing was about. And so I was here I was 19 years old, relying on drugs, now called actually survive and keep going. And my self-worth, my self-confidence, everything was just so low where I was so depressed and so anxious, but I didn't know what these words were. I, di- I didn't know what was happening because a decade ago, there was no podcast and stuff talking about this stuff. It was just a, you know what I mean? And now it's 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 such a conversation. Where if, if people feel like oh, I'm super sad on the inside, I got all this pain inside me, they know, they can actually associate to something now. And they're like, oh, this is what's happening. Now I can look to sort of unravel this issue happening. But back then I thought that something was broken inside of me. And I, I was I was in so much pain where I thought it would be harder to actually stay here in this world than it would be to leave. So at 19, I tried to take my own life, um, which woke me the hell up, actually, and realized that if I'm not going to actually take control of my own life and do things and create the way I want, then I'll forever be a byproduct of someone else's creation. 
And I just got really hungry then. I got really hungry to sort of, you know, say no to the things. I wasn't just going to be misled by people and do things for the sake of it. I was going to, I wanted to create my own future. So I started a couple of different businesses. They completely failed, um, you know, and then everything really started to change at about 21 years old. I got introduced to my first business model, uh, like, like a network marketing business model. And that completely changed the game for me, actually. So I dived into personal development, started doing the work on myself. Long story short, we, sh- we can dive into it if you want. Um, 23 years old, I was making enough money to be financially free. We had a residual income built up. We were doing over seven figures in sales a year. And um, I did what any 23-year-old would do with that kind of business. And I moved to Mexico. And I've just traveled the world since teaching other people how to also just completely shift their life, shift their mindset and create a life of freedom on their own terms. So, um, you know, between then and now, what we've really done is I, I taught all around the world, spoken countries and all that fun stuff. But now what we're really passionate about is we're on a mission now to impact lives of a million people through our training and education, through our podcasts, through our seminars, through our online programs to really help people teach, learn the stuff that they should have learned in school. Because I think if if I had learned the stuff I know now back in school, I think my life would have been a lot different. But I think think of the ripple effect if people just started to learn things like emotional intelligence, um, self confidence, self trust, just those three things. If people learn them in school, I, I think we'd see a lot more. We'd see a lot less suicide, a lot less depression. We'd see a lot less domestic violence. We'd see a lot less of these things in the world because happy people don't hurt people. Absolutely. So if people actually can understand what's happening inside of them and know how to regulate it and express it uh, properly, then I think we we'll really will be creating a better world. So that's a bit of a story. Yeah, 100% agree. You know, I'm an advocate for, you know, teaching a lot of the life skills and, and you know, things that we've learned as business owners and entrepreneurs, um, you know, putting that into the school system. So I, I'm, I'm always a champion behind that. We really need to change the curriculum and, and, and what's taught in schools because we're using something that's 50 years old, you know, and our world has changed so much then. And I think, you know, as, as you just said, if we – you know change what we're taught in schools it would make such a difference to people's lives and then you know and and how they could cope etc so you you sort of touched on your story there about you know being broke at 21 and financially free at 23 and for for my audience where predominantly you know women in um, midlife you know 40 plus that think you know, is this going to take me years now to to turn my life around, um, you know, because they're at a point where they've got massive changes in their life. And, you know, you you really spoke about, you know, that change you had from, you know, when you were living in Mackay to to being financially free. And that that's a massive mindset shift. And, and whilst we can't compare, you know, I'm not saying we're in your shoes when we talk about women in middle life that, you know, have are at that point where everything in their life has changed. Um, but it takes that same mental capacity and a strong mindset to be able to, you know, take the action and push them forward. So, you know, obviously to to pick yourself up from a, when you get to that point where you were so depressed that, you know, you were going to, you try to take your own life to then turning yourself around um, on your own, that, w- that is a massive mindset shift. And I really like you, you know, you've just been so vulnerable in the story that you've shared. If you can share some of the, the like the steps, like, this obviously it takes action and you had to you know wake up that one day and go oh, this is the action I need to take so what was that first action because that would have been one hell of an action to set you up on that path now where you totally changed your life mm. well look yeah like it definitely action does definitely has to happen right um but what I realized I, I don't think any of us really know what the next best step is because how can we ever actually know until we take it and then go over it like we need to take action and then pause for a second and reflect on it and be like was how'd that go how'd that action actually go was it good action was it bad action do i want to do more of it or do i want to do less of it you know so but the most important thing is like if we're sitting on a nail right if we're sitting on a nail and it's painful the best thing you can do is get the fuck off the nail <laughs> just get off first and then figure out which direction you need to run in you see, an airplane doesn't, if an airplane is taken off from Brisbane Airport flying to LAX, it does not, like, what have you ever thought about this? What are the chances of it taking off the runway, right, in the exact direction to the degree that it has to land in LAX? It's next to impossible. And even if it is, by miracle, the exact direction, let's change the airports. Let's say it's flying to Tokyo. It's not going to be the same anymore. 
But how does a plane leave Brisbane Airport and can fly and land safely anywhere in the world when nearly every single time it's going to take off in not the right direction at all? Because what happens is an airplane takes off knowing a few things. It knows exactly where it's going. So it's putting the GPS. This is the life I do want. We're going to LAX. We're not going to Tokyo. We're not going to Brazil. We're going to LAX. That's where we're going. Do we know how to get there? Not really. But I got a general idea. Have I got the right resources on the plane? Yes, we've got we've got a pilot that can get us off. We've got co-pilot. We've got a good crew on board. Have we got enough fuel? Right, it's going to check resources. Um, you know, have we got the computer systems and all these types of things? The last thing it does is it just gets off the ground. If the plane sat on the ground and was just thinking, "Oh my God, I don't want to be here anymore. I don't want to be here anymore. I want to be in LAX. I want to be in LAX," but it refuses to leave because it's too afraid to get off the ground, or, or it refuses to leave because it's like, "But I don't know." which direction it's in. Who cares what direction it's in? Get your plane off the ground and then figure out the rest as you're going. No one in this world has shit figured out. I don't have shit figured out. Nobody does. So, and and I openly tell people about this. I'm like, in case you haven't realized, I'm still a dude up here just fucking winging it in life. I am winging it. I got no idea what I'm doing. Neither do you. All we're doing is trying to do better action than what we did yesterday. That's yeah. it. So all I do, I try. I just teach people. Hey, I tried all these different ways. These are, these aren't good. I'm gonna give you some strategy. What might work based off my experience. But if I can really help you think for yourself, help you build some resilience within, and some more self trust, some more self confidence, then I believe that you'll probably make the best decisions for you. So the most important thing is just to get your plane off the ground first, right? Which which requires action because you know the more we the more we think, right? The more we think, the more we doubt. The more we doubt, the less we do, the less we do, the more we think. So people who are not creating the shifts they want, not creating the change they want, because they're sitting down doing nothing yeah, and they get in their own head. Oh my God, I can't. Oh my God, self-doubt, self-doubt. And I did this for years, but the exact opposite can happen. So if we're on the runway and we're like, i got no idea where I'm going, but I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to give it 100% throttle. I'm just going to get this plane off the ground. When you're smashing that car down, right? I know it's from experience. I'm a skydiver now. Okay. So when I jump out of an airplane with nothing but a backpack and I'm falling to my death at a thousand feet every six seconds, the only thing f- going through my head is what's my height, right? That's it. What's my height and a little bit of, wow, that's so nice. A good view. <laughs> that's about it. Right. That's really about it. Definitely Am I breathing? Forward. That's a nice, right? That's a nice view. And where's, what's my height level at? And then as soon as I pull my parachute, the only thing I'm mattering in that, I'm thinking about in that time is, is the parachute come out safely? That's it. I'm not thinking about landing. I'm not thinking about a horrible exit. I'm not even thinking about how we didn't get to jump at the height we wanted to because the weather. I'm not thinking about nothing other than what I'm doing right there. Why? Because everything's happening really fast. When things are moving fast, we don't have time to think. Procrastination, self-doubt, lack of confidence, lack of self-belief, all these things are, are uh, stemmed from lack of inaction. All right. So the lack of action, the byproduct of all those, the byproduct of lack of action is self-doubt, self-criticism, all these types of things. So the faster we're actually moving, it's going to silence all this in our head. So the best thing we can do is get off the freaking ground, get up to a good altitude, and then go, okay, where are we? What are we doing? Oh shit, LA's that way. Okay, let's let's do a 180. Nearly every plane I've ever been on does that. They get off the ground, they go, okay, oh, we're going the wrong direction. Oh, good, just turn around. And then what does it do for the entire journey? It's off course still. If you ever watch a little green line, it just goes, boop, 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 boop. it's off course nearly the entire time. So its only job is to keep taking action, remember where it's going, and to course correct every single step of the way. So if you ask, what did I do? I had no idea what I was doing. All I knew is that what I was doing wasn't working. So I just took a bet. I'm like, I'm going to try to do the opposite. Maybe maybe it'll work, you know. But I will say the most important thing that every single person has to do is to actually make a decision. Yeah. See, everything incredible, everything incredible and uh, horrible in this world, right, will often come from, right, when I'm talking results, the horrible results we've created, will often come from a decision that was made at some point. So when people, if they like to be the victim, like, oh, but he left me, she left me. Yeah, but you probably made the decision 
to not be your best self in that relationship a long time ago. So no wonder they left you. You probably made a decision a long time ago that you didn't care about your customers that much. So of course they don't want to stick around. You probably made a decision a long time ago, but every single thing that we get in our life is based off a decision. So if that's what we know, we've actually got to bring it back to making a decision. So if we go, we're not getting the results we want, where have we not actually fully made a committed decision? And I, I share this story a bit. I say, women, when I'm on stage, I say, women, put up your hand if you if you got a partner. No, his hands go up. And I say, women, keep up, your, uh, keep up your hand if you'd be thrilled if your man came home and said, baby, I'm 99% sure that you're the woman of my dreams. Let's get married. And all their hands go down. I'm like, what's the problem? And they're all like, give me more. I want more. I want more. Like, what do you mean? We gave you 99%. How much more do you want? <laughs> and every single woman knows, I want the full commitment. And people often wonder why they're not getting the results they want in their life because they're still 99% committed. They're like, well, I'm kind of committed, but I got one foot over here just in case. I got my plan B ready. There's no need for a plan B if you're so committed to plan A. I love that. So the biggest thing I did was I, I made a decision that day. I was like, Nothing is ever going to be more important than my own happiness ever again. So based on that decision, I I then started shaping my reality. So I was like, do I want to stay up here? No, I'm not happy. Good, leave. I left. I went back down to the Gold Coast. What do I want to do next? I'm going to hang around people that make me happy. I'm not going to hang around people that make me doubt myself. I'm not going to hang around people that uh, you know, uh, are doing shitty behaviors. You know, and I started to just be very conscious of the decisions I was making. But in order, you said about people wanting to create change in two years. Two years is long. Yeah, I people come to my seminars for three days. Give me forty hours. Like drastic change in your life in forty hours. We don't even need two years, right? Because it often comes down to getting really clear on what it is you want, removing the bullshit that you keep telling yourself as to why you can't have it, and then creating so much pain in your life that you must act now, because the the pain of inaction is far worse than the pain of actually taking action. Until we can get to that point, then we'll forever stay the exact same. So that's a bit of a long-winded answer. No, it, you know, it's it's true that, you know, making the wrong decision is better than making no decision and staying where you are. So, you know, and, and, yeah. and unless you make a decision, I, I, you don't I, take any action, so... 100%. And then you'd ask yourself, why Why would people, sometimes people are afraid to make the wrong decision because they don't want to fail. They think it's failure. And, you know, taking a, taking no action in itself is the ultimate failure. You know, you can play it safe your whole life and get to 80, 90 years old and go, I'm so, I'm so glad I played it so safe. I took no risks. You know, I did a nice safe job. I didn't, I didn't do anything exciting. I never jumped out of an airplane. I never, I never just, I never traveled. I never went to Italy to drink some Italian wine, sit on the coast. I never did anything. But you know what? I played it very safe and I'm glad that I got out alive. Oh, no way. No, I don't because I'm still going to die. Like <laughs> people think that they can just play it safe because they, they think that taking the wrong uh, action is a failure. But like I said, taking an airplane off the ground the only way we can actually fail is if you just don't get off the ground to begin with. Because if you get off the ground, you start heading the wrong direction. Now you know that that's not the right action. Cool, do something different then. If you continually pivot and change and you get feedback from the decisions you've made, right? Where, where it's bad if you make the decision two or three times in a row and you keep making mistakes, right? Then obviously you're not learning. But these mistakes, these bad decisions should give us learnings. Even the really shitty things that have happened in our life. You know, I've heard the most crazy things People say this happened when I was six, when I was 10, or this or that. I'm like, that's horrific. But I bet you, you still wouldn't go back and change it because it taught you something that's got you to where you are today. Yeah, absolutely. Even though in the moment, it was the worst thing that happened to you. But you made a decision in that moment and it taught you something and you know you'll never do X, Y, B again or whatever insert learning was. Yeah, that's always like, you know, that that particular thing that you went through has made you who you are today, whether it's, you know, resilience or whatever it is. But also, you know, and, and I saw one of your YouTubes when I was um, binging through your content the other day is that 
nothing's a failure if you learn something from it. There's always a lesson in everything. And sometimes it's yeah. we've got to go through those failures to to be able to know when when um when we can you know you can't have success without you can't experience success without first experiencing failure failure as well because you need to know the difference mm-hmm. like the good and the bad. Um you talk a lot in um in your world about pillars to create a, a dream life and um you know also we spoke about you know what you've created in, in the in the time that um that you've been in business and the different businesses you, you've created so when you talk about cr- um creating a dream life and you know a lot of the the women that I work with they're at that stage where you know they're going you know oh you know in five years time or 10 years like time you know I'm working towards this life I'm like no 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 let's live that dream life now like I'm really passionate about that you know like for me, you know, the dream was, you know, having a, a beautiful house by the beach at the Gold Coast. That's my reality. I don't want to wait till I retire to have that. I want that. I want to live mm. my dream life. I don't want to keep dreaming about it. I actually want to live it. And so when you talk about your pillars to creating a dream life, what is that? What What are your pillars? Yeah, so there's four pillars. So pillar number one is you've got to have the right environment. So there's four things you need to have really. So the first one is the right environment. And and I love what you're saying with, you know, I, I do believe in you you kind of have it all now as well. Um, however, there's also sometimes we've we've got to make some short-term sacrifices to create ultimate things. But where I've where so one thing I've I often give people, and this is what I still do to this day, I allow myself to live my ultimate dream life as many times as possible, right? Without being stupid about it. Because if I was to start spending money like I where I want to be, then I'd be broke soon. So, but what I do is I take 10% of every dollar I make, I put into a play account. And my only job with that is to blow it every month. Mm -hmm. I blow it and I blow it doing things that raise my vibration, that give me that experience because it does a few things. It allows you to become extremely familiar with that lifestyle. But the second thing it does, when you fly first class somewhere, the next time you get on a plane and you walk past first class to economy, Oh, it does something to your drive. It it makes you want to never walk down that aisle again and not go to a first class. So when you go to experience this level, you see how great it is and it creates new hunger. So I think it's an incredible thing to do for people. But you know, the first one is the right environment. So we've got to have the right environment. You said, you know, one of the first things that changed for me when I was, you know, in that space, I came back down to the Gold Coast and I because I asked off the question. A year ago, I was extremely happy, loving my life, and now here I am in this mess what changed? And the first thing come to me was the people you surround with. So obviously I, I did a lot more research. I've studied, you know, I've invested over a quarter million dollars in personal development and learning about neuroscience, the brain, human behavior, psychology, neurolinguistic programming, everything, you name it. And every single time I've, I've just seen time after time after time, studies come up, literally showing us the power of our environment, and what it has on us. So we've got two types of environment, our external and our internal. But our external environment will quite often, until we get really good at it, will dictate what's happening internally. So if we're surrounded by five people that are depressed, angry, toxic, and they're just negative and they're talking about gossip and drama and bullshit, that's the shit we're feeding into our minds. So the things we feed in are the things that we'll actually uh, bring out as well. So if we're feeding in drama, we can only actually produce drama. Like if I get a glass of water, okay, and I only pour water into it, the only thing coming out of that cup is water. But if I get a cup and I start pouring in dirt, muddy water, Coca-Cola, the only thing coming out of that cup is a pile of shit that no one wants to touch. But so often, people around allow themselves, their minds to get filled up by drama. They go and hang out at the Friday night bar with Sharon and the ladies so not Sharon, you're Sharon, right? <laughs> so they, I was just, I was thinking of like an Australian name, and then I'm like, I wonder why it's so fresh in my mind, right? But they go, they go hang out at the bar on a Friday night with all the girls, right? But here's here's someone who's wanting to create success, but they go and hang out with five, ten other women who just want to gossip about their their partners, gossip about little Sally and Betty and all this shit. But what's horrible is this person knows inside. They're like, I want to create more success. I want to do more stuff in my life, but I'm allowing myself to get f- filled up by all this shit. And then they go home and they watch all the dr- the drama on TV as well. They watch the news every day. They scroll TikTok all day. And then they wonder why everything in their life is just average. 
because that's what because you're putting an average right so the first thing it really needs to change is our environment we've got to be in the right environment hence why i teach everything i do because that's why if i can put someone in a room with me for 40 hours in a weekend a full immersed environment i completely shift their external environment for that amount of time i will create quantum leaps in their internal environment in three days we don't need two years but if they leave there and then go back to their old environment, then then they get eventually probably start to drift back to where they were. It's like you can't take someone to the gym, give them a three day boot camp, and they and they learn about nutrition, they change their identity about it, you know. And then if they go back to hanging at the bar and drink drinking beers and having burgers with all their friends, eventually they'll slip back to that as well because it's been proven time and time and time and time and time again through Harvard University, Stanford University psychologists all around that we will do what the people around us do eventually because it's more important for us to do what's normal right it's more important for us to fit in with the pack than it is for us to actually stand out and be right right so how we associate that is if you've got a dream if you've got an idea that you know you're right and you want to create this business you want to break up with this person you want to create this whatever it is but everyone else around you is telling you otherwise what studies have shown us, it's more important for us to for you to give up on that dream and fit in with everybody else than it is for you to actually stand out, speak your truth, and go after it. It's a tribal mentality. You know, our brains, we're just we're programmed to want to be with the pack. We perceive that as safety. But if you're aware that that's what you're doing, then you get to change it. Yeah. But what if this? What if your environment are people that their standard of living is success, is not gossiping? They're talking about impact. They're talking about freedom. Then eventually, guess what will happen? It'll be it, it'll be normal for you to also want to do those things because guess what? You would rather fit in with the pack than stand out and be lazy and do the things that you used to want to do. It's going to completely shift your identity. So that environment literally shapes, changes everything for us. So it's super important. So the environment's number one. Yep. The next one is the right vehicle. We've got to be in the right vehicle. And I, I see this a lot. I see every time I get on YouTube, it's like they follow me on YouTube everyone's got an ad. Everyone's got an ad with a new opportunity. Get rich with my program here. Get rich with this never seen before new side hustle. Invest money here, get rich in 3.7 seconds. And it's so easy for people to get caught up with trying to get the next shiny object. And and I'm not, like, I I think that, I think that eventually these things would probably be successful for them um, if it was actually, like, if it was actually right for them. So just because it's right for some people, it doesn't mean it's right for everybody else, right? So we've got to pick the right vehicle. This all really comes down to actually what's what's meaningful for you, what's important for you, what's it, what's in alignment with your highest values, what's your true north. These are the things I really like to work with people on. So if you can discover the things that are meaningful for you, then you find a way to get paid through it. You'll you'll be living a, a really awesome life. You'll be paying a lot of money to the things you love. That's the right environment. Yeah. Third one is the right timing. Third one is the right timing. So this really comes down to what I was sort of talking about before, making the decision. Making the decision and taking massive action. If we're, if we're still sitting on the fence, the only thing we get is splinters. So either get off or get over. Make a decision and make something happen because guess what? You're never going to get this moment back. You never get this moment back. So do something that's going to better you towards a better tomorrow. It's the most important thing. And the last one is the right you the right you. So this comes down to three areas, the right belief system, the right values, and the right attitude. This is the biggest thing that this this drives the whole ship. This is literally the rudder of the ship. So you can have an engine in a boat, but if the rudder is stuck on one direction, you're just going to go around in circles. <laughs> and you wonder why you get nowhere. But if you can get the engine going and you can get the rudder working in alignment, you'll get exactly where you need to go as so as fast as you can. Right, So it's about developing the right belief systems, rewiring your unconscious mind, letting go of the shit that you've learned throughout your life, getting clear on your values and developing the best attitude. The best attitude is to de develop the th way of thinking that it doesn't matter which wind is blowing on my sails, I'm going to adjust my sails accordingly to continually get to my end destination. Instead of sitting and blaming, complaining and justifying as to why I'm not getting the things I want, we've got to take radical responsibility of, of what is happening to us in our world and respond from that versus react. They're kind of, they're the four pills. Yeah, love them. Thank you for sharing those. So just quickly, your top tip for creating that, you know, life of freedom, the 
and and you know freedom means different things to different people what's your idea of, of freedom and then what's your top tip to actually you know how to to actually create that life my idea is freedom is going to be different from everybody else, right? And everyone thinks I'm going to sit on the beach and blah, blah, blah. I did that. It lasted two days and I was like, that's not my freedom because I want to create more impact. Um, but I know some people who love to do that. So the most important thing is to actually get really clear on what is your dream life. Like get very clear on how much will it cost you to actually live that life. I guarantee you it's probably not even a million dollars. A lot of people think I've got to make a million bucks. Why? Oh, I don't know. Don't you? It's like this invisible worthy scale of the entrepreneur world. Unless you're a seven-figure entrepreneur, then you're not good. But so many people I've worked with, um, if they create, if, if like we, we do this dream formula where you actually figure out exactly how much you need to make, uh, to live the life you want. So many times I've done this, people have come back, right? And they've thought big. They're like, I want to have all these things. And it's like 300, 400, 500,000 a year. I'm like, dude, to get from that to a million a year, it's a big jump. Yeah. So you were about to commit to this huge thing when you didn't really need to do it, right? So the first one is get really clear on what it is you actually want. Next one, decide that you're going to stop at absolutely nothing to actually create that. And the last one is take massive freaking action in any direction that's going to get you towards that. Because if you're clear on where you want to go, you're going to, give, you're going to be a lot better at making better decisions. You'll know what to say yes to and what to say no to. If it's in alignment with your vision, you say yes. If it's not, you say no, and you move on to the next thing. Yeah, love that. So, Morgan, thank you so much for your time on the Sharon Cliff podcast today. And you have, a, I'm going to actually move this podcast forward because I know you've got an event on the weekend at DreamFest and I'm actually going to get this released tomorrow morning so that um, we can oh, amazing. link to that event as well. So I'm actually going to bring it forward. I was actually going to put you in a couple of weeks. So we'll um, we'll pop a link to that. We'll also pop some um, links to your socials and website as well. And um you know, if, if you want to know more about, you know, what Morgan does and his events that he's got, um, obviously he's got a podcast, we'll um, pop a link to that as well and um, yeah, definitely reach out. So, um, yeah, thank you so much for um, sharing your story, being vulnerable and, um, yeah, just giving us a bit of an insight as to, you know, what, what you need to do to to get your version of success and, uh, and, um, and your version of freedom because, it, again, it is different for everyone. So thank you so much. You're very welcome. And, and one thing that we can actually do because we've got a – handful of tickets left right and i just want to sell it out so every single person who gets a ticket i'll gift them another one so everyone who gets a ticket um so if it's going to come out tomorrow it's awesome it's literally two days this weekend it's gonna be amazing so anyone who gets a ticket just know it's gonna be a second one allocated to your account so rock up with a friend awesome. and um you'll get in so yeah appreciate that awesome before you press stop thanks for listening to today's episode and if you enjoyed this episode do the three s's subscribe so you never miss an episode each thursday Shout out to your community so they can be inspired and empowered and share. Share with me your aha moments and your takeaways. By doing this, it helps this podcast to inspire and impact more women globally so they can have a fulfilling life and business. I would love for you to connect with me on Instagram, the Sharon Cliff. And if you want to know more about me or how you can work with me, head to my website, sharoncliff.com.au. See you next time.